Hello everybody, Sanyar, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to talk about the Big Ideas 2022 report from ARK Invest. This has been released literally in the last hour. I want to talk about all of that in this video. Now, before we jump into today's video, you guys know what I'll ask you. Like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, guys. Subscribe if you've not subscribed and let's get in today's video. So. This report, like I said, it was published literally today, 25 January, literally like uh, 12 minutes ago. And I went over it briefly, but I want to go over it with you guys together so that we have a reference point as to what's going on. And in the upcoming hours, they will have a bunch of webinars, a bunch of presentation, including a presentation from uh, Dr. Liu, uh, professor, obviously we all know him uh, by now, at, at least we know him by the uh, base editor guru and a lot more so obviously the this this report from arc invest is all about looking at uh, different technologies for the upcoming year right 2022 but 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 in this report they also make predictions in the next five years usually right this is how arc invest has always worked right they always believe in the long term right although they're focusing on quarter by quarter because that is their duty as a ETF fund they have to uh, they have to obviously communicate that with their shareholders with the stakeholders involved but ultimately ARK Invest has always been in the mindset of what to expect for the next five years because by with this mentality they can basically present that to their stakeholders shareholders that look these are the technologies that are going to revolutionize the next five years it doesn't have to be specifically in the next five years but it's about uh, five years in the ballpark right so we talk about CRISPR we talk about genome editing we talk about battery electrical vehicles we talk about auto, AI autonomous uh, driving obviously we talked a lot about blockchain specifically with Bitcoin and of course cryptocurrencies they talk about all of that in this uh, PDF and I definitely will not go over each of the points I will link the link um, to download this report in the description below so hopefully you guys can go over it and look at what you specifically want to take a look at obviously what technologies that you want to take a, a look at when they talk about it and obviously they talk about details reports visuals so it's it's a really uh, great thing for you to take a look at whichever technology that you're invested in or you want to invest in right so but most specifically here technologies and convergent you know this is a nice visual because it shows something that we've actually talked a lot about in this channel right we actually talk a lot about how genome editing for example is going to accelerate its growth and its pace in the next years through different technologies like big data ai machine learning and in this case you can clearly see here ai cloud computing uh, genome sequencing mobile device connected living therapies all of that is connected to genome editing somehow you can see here everything is is being connected and it makes sense right these are all tools that companies are leveraging we saw how CRISPR therapeutic ceo talked about automation robotics same for beam therapeutic ceo evans uh, so production facilities everyone's learning from tesla what they're doing there it's not just a car company AI, machine learning, big data, making sense for all day, that data. And then you sort of adjust your uh, talent pool from it, right? You adjust your company's mindset, you adjust your company team's uh, direction, and then you sort of work with software to leverage it regardless of which vertical you're specifically specialized in, right? So gone are the days that you can just, you know, move away from technologies and just focusing, focus on your particularly uh, vertical right your specific vertical that you're working on right those are gone those the days are never coming back today you need to be versatile you need to be flexible you need to be able to leverage different technologies because ultimately all these technologies that you're looking at this on this screen are all tools that you can actually leverage today as a company for example a company can literally spin off AWS cloud computing right but being basically an Airbnb right this is what Airbnb literally did uh, a decade plus ago so food for thought right we believe that five technology platform will generate significant equity markets over long term right genome sequencing 3.6 trillion and then you have all the way increasing to 126 trillion for non-innovation equity capitalization ai battery technology blockchain robotics and gene sequencing respectively in terms of highest growth to lowest growth but still 
these are huge numbers, guys. 3.6 trillion just for gene sequencing is huge, right? Just think about where they stand today, right? Uh, 125 billion, right? Clearly a 40% growth uh, to, to even get there, which is uh, obviously this is a, a car growth, but that's just huge, right? And they, uh, our convinced, believe that this is 2022, 2020, we stand at 14 trillion with all these technologies combined. But by 2030, which is actually 20, 10 years later from 2020, is about 210 trillion, which is just huge, right? This is this number is just mind boggling, right? So we're looking at nearly tenfold more than 100 trillion in equity market capitalization by 2030, just with AI, right? And then they go through battery technology, robotics, genome seek technologies, which is a lot more relevant to us. At this point, clearly you can see gene editing over a trillion, gene sequencing 1.6 trillion, living therapies. Um, so that's quite interesting, right? These are big numbers, guys. This is, these are not numbers to, to sniff at. These are significant numbers. So now they're going through each of those technologies that we looked at, right? AI, battery, and obviously gene sequencing, so on. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on each of these slides. Like I mentioned, I would highly advise you guys to go through each of these, uh, depending on which technology you're more and more interested in. Uh, obviously, the rights law is something that has been mentioned in the past, specifically with genome genomics, right? Genomics is obviously subject to the right law as you decrease cost over time uh, to increase the output, or at least um, increase the, the rate pace of innovation, right? Then talk about social media, social commerce, e-commerce, digital wallets, right? Obviously, all the blockchains, and specifically, they have a section with uh, with Bitcoin that I would love to go over in a separate video. I would love to do that, but let's just uh, keep scrolling down here and let's go through it. They give the example of El Salvador as legal tender. This all happened in 2021. People think that it happened like years ago, but this just happened recently. And there are rumors that there will be a next country to adopt. Bitcoin is legal tender. Uh, we have to be tuned, right? We have to stay tuned for that news. So I do want to jump to now uh, over the Web3 here. They go over Web3, um, but the genome editing, right? Curing diseases, non-masking symptoms, right? So based on ARC research, the equity marketization of genome editing and gene therapy companies could go 54% at a compound annual rate of return, scaling from roughly 130 billion where they are today to 1.1 trillion by 2026, right? So that those are huge numbers, guys. By 2026, 1.1 trillion, that's the total market cap just for genome editing companies. So we're talking about like CRISPR Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, Caribou Biosciences, NTLA, Graphite Bio, Verve Therapeutics. Uh, even more to come, obviously, Prime Medicine, Mammal Bioscience, all of them, they expect to be worth that much. I actually think that's a reasonable guess. I actually don't think that's 100% bullish, but I obviously don't think it's bearish. I just think it's actually quite respectable um, as, a, as a prediction. Again, 2026 is still in four years. Uh, there's a lot to happen in four years. You know, just think about what happened in the last four years. Clearly, you can see on the screen here, just in the last four years, right? If you look at 2016, CRISPR emerged, ex vivo was emerging, then in vivo, then you have base. Base editing was barely a topic by 2026, uh, 16, uh, and we believe this will grow. And on obviously, prime prime editors just became a topic last year. And then think of what it can achieve in the next uh, three, four years. So I truly believe that these are reasonable prediction. I do want to talk about something here that one of my comments here on YouTube, uh, people were talking about talents, right? Allergy and what they're doing. And I would highly advise them to look at this particular uh, graph because it tells you the difference between CRISPR talents and zinc fingers, right? And clearly you can see that CRISPR cost wise is very low. Time is days as opposed to talents, which we're talking about weeks, technical difficulty, Difficulty is very low. In fact, you can literally inject yourself with CRISPR at home if you have the proper tools to it, do it, uh, as opposed to the other one, which you obviously cannot do, at least not from my knowledge. Um, and more specifically here, multiplex editing, right? Difficult, very difficult, but not difficult. We've seen all these companies, including CRISPR Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, talk about multiplex editing, and then delivery, right? Delivery, uh, and this is being improved every single day. We saw the paper from Beam Therapeutics, uh, uh, sorry, from Dr. Liu's uh, paper in his lab. You know, we talked, talked about his, um, 
his uh, delivery methods that are set to improve. And obviously, this is going to direct, uh, affect directly CRISPR. So, you know, in terms of scaling, right, CRISPR is here, right? I don't think these will disappear, talents and zinc fingers. But I think when you talk about CRISPR companies, uh, sorry, companies in the public markets, I think CRISPR will be the tool, in my opinion. Uh, well, this is what we expect just by looking at these graphs here. Clearly, CRISPR is dominating the academic research papers and clinical trials. Uh, you can see the trend going a lot higher, right? But will zinc fingers and talent disappear? Absolutely not. I don't think so. Not anytime soon. But CRISPR is here to stay. I think CRISPR, if you're new to this space, I highly advise you to look into CRISPR as a genome editing tool, specifically looking at that vertical and then continue your research. But it always is a good idea to see what are the alternative technologies out there. Uh, clearly, the academy and academic papers and companies are saying otherwise when it comes to trending. CRISPR, CRISPR extent to beyond edit, gene, ad, genome editing. So I would love them to talk about agriculture, livestock, animals, and so on. But unfortunately, they keep talking about human therapeutics at some point. And uh, again, here they're not specifically stating humans, right? They're, they're just talking about genomes. So you can take that. Uh, what you will, but you know, clearly you can do a lot more with CRISPR than just you know, uh, editing a gene. You know, you can turn them off, on, uh, silence a toxic gene. Uh, so clearly here you can do a lot more. And then you know, this is something that Dr. Liu's interview with Ark Invest. We talked about the PAM sequence here, uh, and obviously we talked about sizes, right? CRISPR nuclei size four kilobases. Uh, base editing, five kilobases, prime editor, six kilobases, right? So keep these numbers in mind, right? There are differences. So uh, I think what they're trying, trying to show you guys here is the analogy that, you know, the air, aircrafts didn't make trucks disappear and trucks didn't make sedans disappear, right? So you have different tools for different use cases, different application, and you just have to make sure that you use the right tool for the right application, right? So in my opinion, that's what I'm reading here. Genome editing gene, gene therapy companies could reach roughly 1.1 trillion market cap by 2026. This is what we talked about. And this is a graph with percentage of what the big pharma biotech enterprise value is today. And they're expecting, you know, genome editing to have a bigger share as you grow, right? All clearly you can see over the years it has grow, grown, but um, I actually think all these companies will grow, not just genome editing, not just uh, CRISPR companies, but just like biotech in general, right? So I wouldn't take that percentage, you know, um, too much. I wouldn't look too much into it because I think it may be misleading, especially if you have like, for example, Moderna or a Pfizer increasing 10x in the next years, you know, that percentage here would be affected, right? It'll go lower, obviously. Um, but then again, you know, it's always a good thing that everyone increases in value. So it is what it is. And then I have a new section here, multi-omics. I love how they're putting it there. And I don't know if you guys noticed that, but these slides are coming slightly like in the middle. Uh, and if you look at 2021, they were actually towards the end, right? They were, uh, this is a very interesting part, right? These are little these subtle details that you have to take a notice, right? Because they're clearly valuing genomics here at a different valuation than they were when 2021 started. Uh, obviously, we all seen with our G fund uh, experience in the last year in terms of stock price. So clearly here they're making a push. Talking about the human uh, genome project finally finished 2021, right? And the talk, this is more about sequencing. This is more about diagnostics. Uh, obviously this is their play for Pacific Biosciences, which they're quite bullish on. I actually think BNGO here is definitely a topic that we should be talking about, right? So. Clearly here you can then, this is what I was sort of expecting, right? You can clearly see here the cost to sequence the DNA, the cost to sequence the genome has gone down over time. Uh, you can see here uh, it's been going down over the years and we are at a point where, you know, it is the more it goes down at that point, the more you just see more companies spun, spinning off because now the valuation makes sense, right? Now you can actually make sense out of this business, right? Uh, sort of how battery vehicles, you know, electrical vehicles were all about, you know, you couldn't spin off a Tesla in the late 90s or early 2000s because it just didn't make sense in terms of pricing. But in the 2020s, it makes total sense, right? Costs have gone down. Same thing with uh, genomics, right? 
talk about a renaissance here. I would argue that, you know, it's not just, you know, their MS technology here, but just genomics as a whole, biotech as a whole is going through a renaissance, right? Healthcare as a whole, in my opinion, but uh, it is what it is. So take a look if we can find something else here. So great details. And again, I would highly advise you guys to go over each of these slides. Um, so clearly here, this comment, new tools can solve biological mysteries. There's so many mysteries in the human body, in the human genome, um, especially with where we are today, where we expect to go in the next five, 10 years. Um, so clearly here, they're talking about the opportunity here, revenue of 300 billion revenue opportunity for multi-omics. I love this term, multi-omics. Uh, that's a great, great term. I think they just came up with it. Yeah, so, you know, moving on to electrical vehicles, and I, I don't think I'm going to spend too much time at this point here in this video. I want to make a separate video just looking at different verticals, maybe different uh, sec sec sections of these these uh, slides here. But clearly here, electrical vehicles, everything that screams to me here is just Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. I don't think about anything else when I'm thinking about electrical vehicles at this point. There is no competition. Uh, Tesla is definitely the leader. Uh, despite what President Biden says about GM, who delivered 26 vehicles in 2021 as a whole, um, electrical vehicles are dominated by Tesla in terms of quality, in terms of numbers in U.S. and around the world. So uh, obviously here they're expecting electrical vehicles to, to have a bigger share in the upcoming years. Clearly here you can see all these graphs showing exactly that, ex comparing that in the past few years and where they can go in 2026, for example, their forecast, obviously, like I said, in the next five years. Um, forecast in their uh, auto autonomous ride hail, which is basically another word for robot taxi from Tesla. Uh, clearly, Tesla is the leader when it comes to data. They have millions and millions, billions of miles being ridden, while other companies have literally, you know, uh, thousands of miles, not really real world data because those are bounded regions like Waymo and so on. So, Tesla is definitely the leader for it. Uh, I wish they would just clearly state just you know, Tesla is the leader. These are the slides for Tesla, right? Uh, obviously, that's not what they'll do, but because uh, they're talking about technologies. But I think this is uh, this is obviously a testament of where Tesla is. So I'm going to end this video like this. I definitely don't want to take too much time here talking about different technologies. I just want to really go over the genomic side of things like we saw and just basically talk about that big idea. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about these slides, what you guys think about this prediction for genome editing uh, and for genomics as a whole. Curious to see what you guys think. Leave me a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I do subscribe if you found value from it. Like this video and we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much and we'll see what 2022 uh, comes for us. Thank you.